1994, the same year that Commodore went bankrupt, Omega introduced the zip drive. This revolutionary piece of technology meant you could use 100 meg of storage on a single disk. Gone are the days of juggling multiple floppies to transfer files from one computer to another. With its relatively high capacity and transfer speeds, the Iomega zip drive became the go-to solution for professionals and home users alike. It provided a very convenient way to transfer larger files. The Iomega zip drive truly did prove to be a game changer. But what about Amiga owners? Well, the zip drive came in three flavors. A parallel port version, a SCSI version, and eventually a USB version. This means the drive is technically compatible with almost three decades worth of hardware. In the case of the Amiga, if you had a SCSI port, which is standard on the 3000, you'd be able to connect one of these external SCSI drives with no problem. And you'd be forgiven for thinking that the parallel version of the drive provided a solution for Amiga 500, 600 or 1200 owners. Unfortunately, that's not quite the case. The parallel or printer port on the Amiga is slightly different from that on the IBM compatible rivals of the time. The crux of it is, there's some of the signaling is missing. Now this doesn't really affect the use of a dot matrix printer on the Amiga, they work fine. But to do some quite clever two-way communication with an external peripheral, using those pins wasn't an option. But this didn't deter a man called Bruce Abbott, who in 1998 produced something called PPA Zip. This was a hardware and software solution to using a parallel port zip drive on an Amiga. By cleverly bridging that compatibility gap with some extra signals from the joystick port, so I decided to build something based on Bruce Abbott's original work. The version I'm building is buffered, and a bit of buffering can't hurt the job, can it? Bruce did provide a version using a 47LS07 as a buffer, so I've kind of done the same. The idea was to build a circuit board and get it made and design it so that it would fit neatly behind an Amiga 500 without getting in the way of any of the other ports. I think I've mostly succeeded in that, but make your own mind up. Let's dig into it, build the circuit board and uh, test it on the Amiga. So, the solution now built, to get it to plug in, I've had to replace the two hex bolt nut things with some screws to hold in the place plate, and I've removed the shielding from the 9-pin joystick adapter. And that's primarily so it fits the extension lead I've got for the joystick, which quite neatly fits on the end. So there we have it. We can go from this 
to the joystick port and connect the Amiga to the parallel drive. In Amiga OS 3.2, installation is relatively simple. You just copy the PPA zip dot device into the devs folder and copy the relevant mount tools into either storage DOS drivers or into your devs DOS drivers, depending on whether you want them to automatically mount or not. Our plan here is to start small with just a text file. That's worked quite well. Yay! Now let's try copying a game from my Amiga archive on my PC. Pick worms copy that onto the Amiga 500 Plus. I think you'll agree this has gone quite well. There's links to PCB Way in the description below where you can order your own PCBs along with a full bill of materials. Yay! Why not check this out next? <laughs> 